Greetings to you all in the name of the Lord Jesus. I hope you're all doing well and kept by grace. We thank the Lord for today. And welcome to Wed Alight Ministries. And my name is Sister Gloria. And today I've come online to expand on the love of Christ, the agape love of Christ Jesus. I have filmed a previous, I filmed uh, previously on the love of Christ. And today I am expanding on the love of Christ, which is the agape love of Christ. And so I hope you, you're all doing well and the new year is treating you good. So far we are nearly uh, done with January. How has it been? Have you seen signs and wonders already? Are you still waiting on the Lord for a miracle? Let me know how 2020 is treating you, but I hope in all things that you still keep your faith and that you still stay grounded in Christ. Before we go into the word of the Lord, let's pray. Father Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come before you today. And we give you all the praise and we glorify your holy name. And we say, Father Lord, thank you. For this is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. And as your mercies are renewed every day, Father Lord, we believe in your mercies for today. Release your mercies upon us, O oh Jesus. And Father, as we go through your word, Father, open our minds that we may understand your scripture, that we may understand your word and give us revelations as we go through this and let this word father lord transform a soul and let everything that we discuss father lord be of you and let your will be done in the name of jesus amen and so we thank the lord for today and we bless his name as i like to say before I go into the scripture for today, first off, I want to talk briefly about love. So love in Hebrews is Ahava. Ahava. I hope I'm pronouncing it well. And there are four types or four kinds of love, which is Eros love, which is the romantic love. And this is love between husband and wife romantic love. The second one is torch, which is empathy bond, which is more of a family love. And we've got agape love, which is unconditional love by Christ Jesus. And we have filia love, which is a friendly love, which is normally between brothers and sisters in Christ, a uh, friendly, friendly love, okay? So we've got Eros, we've got Storch, we've got Agape, we've got Philia. But today we are going to focus more on the Agape love. And in the previous video, I did talk about the Agape love and I did say that I will expand on it. So on this, we are going to expand on the agape love. Now, we're going to read from the books of from the book of John, chapter fourteen, from verse thirteen to eighteen. John chapter 14, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it says, the Bible says, And whatever you ask in my name, 
that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of Truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Amen. What do we get from here? First thing, the Lord is promising us that whatever we ask in his name, which is Christ Lord Jesus, whatever we ask in his name, he will do. Whatever we ask in my name, which is Lord Jesus, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified. Because when we pray, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. And that the Lord may be glorified because when the Lord answers your prayers, when he delivers you, when he saves you, when he gives you uncommon testimonies, the glory goes to the Lord. Because we have to remember that nothing is ever by our own strength, but it's by the Spirit of the Lord. Because... Whatever the Lord blesses, whatever the Lord does, he deserves the glory. Jesus never took any of the glory whilst he was on earth. And his disciples us to learn that whatever we do is for the Lord's glory. And so he will answer your prayers so that the Lord will be glorified. Amen. And he says that if you love me, keep my commandments. Very simple. If you love me, keep my commandments. It's like a child at home. Because you love your parents, you have to keep certain rules and regulations. Because you love your parents, you have to listen to what your parents are saying. Whatever you love, you commit to. That could be in your education. That could be in your relationship. That could be in your friendship. Whatever it is that you love, you find you're committed to it. No matter the circumstance, no matter the situation, you prioritize that because of the love you have for this person or because of the love you have for this thing that you're doing. And so Jesus is saying that if you love me, keep my commandments. And in this new covenant, he says that we should love our neighbor as we love ourselves. He's come to give us love. He died on the cross because he loves us. Everything that we do is for the love of Christ. Everything that he does is for the love of Christ. Amen. Because in John 3, 16, that most of us know, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Because he loved us first, he came to die for our sake. He came to die for our sin. He came to die that we may be redeemed. Amen. And so we thank the Lord for his love. His love, his mercy endures forever. There's no end to it because even, even when we depart, we still dwell in his love, which is a very beautiful thing. But you've got to be in a relationship with him for you to understand certain things that the Lord promises you. But he says that if you love me, Gloria, keep my commandments. Amen. And he says that he will pray 
the Father and he will give you another helper. We've got the Holy Ghost. We've got the Holy Spirit, who is our comforter, who is our helper, who guides us, who leads us, who tells us things that pertain to us and even things that are mysteries of the Lord. He tells us. The Holy Spirit guides us. The Holy Spirit will not lead you astray. And the Lord, Christ Jesus, has given us the Holy Spirit that he may abide with us forever. That he may abide with you forever. That he may abide in me forever. That he may abide in us forever. So there is no end. His kingdom has no end. We have to remember that. Because he's the God of yesterday, today, and forever. He is everlasting. The Lord forever reigns. His kingdom has no end. And so he may abide with us. He may abide with you. He may abide with Gloria forever. And the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. The spirit of truth is the spirit that is that has no faults, that has no blemish. That is the spirit of truth. And the world cannot receive the spirit of truth because for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And so when you are in the world, certain things will not make sense to you because you believe in Christ Jesus for yourself. You feel him, you know him, he does miracles, he speaks to you. But people in the world may not comprehend because mind you, last time when I spoke about the light, it said darkness could not comprehend it. So certain things may not make sense to the world in general until you accept him into, you accept Christ Jesus into your life. And once you do that, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> And once you do that, you accept Jesus Christ in your life and he gives you his light and he gives you understanding and the Holy Spirit gives you understanding. Amen. And so with this scripture, what we find is that it connects with Eros love because it's unconditional love. You will do it with no complaints because the other person shows love. Whenever there's eros love involved, you do things without complaint. You do it selflessly because of the love that you have to, for the person. And it's the same thing that Christ Jesus did when he went on that cross. When he cried until he cried blood. When he took that cross that we may be saved. When he got whipped at his back for our sins, when he took the thorns on his, on his head and bled that blood from the cross of his head was for our sake. When he received the piercing, the nail in his hands, the nails in his feet is for our sake. When he got pierced on the side, is for our sake because of the love that he has for us. The agape love is unconditional, it's priceless. You cannot repay Christ with your life because you're not even worth it. You're not worth it in a sense that you are not even holy enough. But we thank God that he came to die for our sin, that we may be glorified in the Lord to make us worthy of him and be Christ like. Amen. And storage love also connects because it's a bonding love. So, what he's done here, or what the Lord is telling us in John 14, from 13 to 18, talks about Eros love, talks about storage love. And storage love, as I said, is empathy bond. It's a love that shows empathy. And normally this is a family bond. And so not only did Christ come to die for our sake to show us the agape love, which is unconditional, he also shows us the eros love, which is the romantic love. 
And at the same time, he demonstrates empathy, stored love. And we thank him really for the love that he has shown us because if we don't understand the love of Christ, if the love of Christ is not in you, you may not be able to understand the love of Christ to be able to show it to your neighbor as he's asked us to. But he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And as you guys remember last time, I did say that even we have to love our own enemies and pray for them. It's biblical because of the love. And that only becomes very, very powerful when he turns things around for your good because you love him and because you are called according to his purpose. And so the Lord will not harm you. He says he knows the thoughts he has for us. Thoughts to prosper us, to elevate us. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm now going to, so in verse 21, chapter 14, verse 21, the Bible continues to say, he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. Did you catch that? He who loves my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And, who, and he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Amen. So if we love the Lord as he's asking us to do in verse 15, then we love him enough to keep his commandments. Because he who has his commandments and keeps them. So if we love him, we will keep his commandments. And by that, we will show it. And, we sh and with that, it shows that we love Christ Jesus. Amen. The word comes alive as his love manifests to you. As his love manifests to us, the world the word comes alive. Amen. In verse 23, Jesus says, in all this is Jesus that is speaking. In verse 23, Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and he and we will come to him and make our home with him. Amen. I'm going to say that again. Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, anyone loves me, he will keep my word, which is the word of Christ Jesus. And my father will love him. And so in keeping his word, the father, our father in heaven will love us. If I keep his word, he will love me and will come to me and make our home with him. Hmm. That's deep. So if anyone loves me, he will keep my word, which is us. And my father, which is the Lord, will love him, which is us. And we will come to him, which is the Lord Jesus and the Father will come to him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. And so when the Lord comes to us, he comes to make his home with us, which is why our body is a temple of Christ Jesus. Because once he comes in, he makes a home with us because we have kept his commandments. You cannot keep someone's commandments if you do not love the person. Then you're deceiving yourself and you're deceiving the person that you claim to love. But he says that we have to keep his word. And when we do that, it shows that we love him. 
and he will come and make his home with us. And he makes that plural, which is very interesting and exciting. And we thank the Lord. Amen. In the verse 23, as I read, his love becomes his word. The love of Christ creates a home in our hearts. Amen. I'm going to read now John chapter 15, verse 7. Turn with me to John chapter 15, verse 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Two way thing. If you abide in me, if I, Gloria, abide in the Lord and his word abides in me, I will ask what I desire and it shall be done for me because I have, I have abided in the Lord because of his word, because I have abided in his word. He abides in me and whatever I ask, it shall be done for me. So if I do not abide in him and in his word, then there's no connection. There's no friendship. There's no relationship. Then the Lord no longer becomes my father. So he will not feel obliged to answer what I'm asking or to give me what I'm asking. But if you love him, if I love him and I keep his word, amen, then whatever I ask, he will do it for me. And keep my word. David said, teach me. How to keep your word in my heart so that I may not sin against you. So even whenever you're tempted, the word of the Lord will come out of your mouth and you will not be led to do certain things that you know you're not allowed to do. So when you keep the word in you, remember in the beginning, the Lord created the heavens and the earth and he spoke a word. And John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Amen. So whenever we keep the word in us, it becomes flesh. Amen. He comes in us, as he said already. He's coming to make home with us. Because just as the word was in the beginning, it is still now. And it shall forever be. Heaven and earth will pass away. But the word of the Lord the word of the Lord remains, will forever be. Amen. And so we've got to learn to keep the word of the Lord in our hearts so that we may not sin against him. And so if you love him, I mean, if you love him, you will keep his commandments and you will keep his word in your heart that you will not sin against him. I know we are human. There are certain things we're going to do that is error. He says, even, even the Lord said to his disciples, he said that the soul is willing, but the flesh is weak. This is Jesus Christ speaking to his disciples. Each time he went to pray and came back, they were asleep. And he would tell them to watch and pray. And then he said, the soul is willing. Your soul is willing, but the flesh is weak. So at times, we may want to do certain things. But our flesh is so weak that we fall. And if you fall, it's how quickly you get back up and make amends. And don't sink in there to let the devil take power and control over you and over whatever situation it is. But you've got to rise up and ask for forgiveness of sin, repent, and the Lord will wash away all your sins, which is why he went on the cross. And he will make you whole. And you keep on moving. 
Amen. And in John 15, verse 7, I actually like this, that if you abide in me. One thing I say, oftentimes we, uh, at times the word of the Lord can be misinterpreted and misunderstood. And you find that there are some, some the Lord is, is, the word of the Lord is principled. That you find, it's almost like terms of conditions. You know, if a company says that we will give you something for free, maybe your condition might be buy one and you get one free. They won't give you anything for free. Or spend 75 pounds and you get five pounds voucher. Or spend 50 pounds and you get five pounds off. Or spend 100 pounds, you get 10 pounds off. I hope you get the idea. And so the Lord says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, because if you abide in him, then you've got to learn his words for his word to be abided in you. Whatever you ask, whatever you desire, it shall be done for you. Amen. Go with me to the book of First Corinthians. Chapter 14, verse 1. First Corinthians, chapter 14, verse 1. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. So before you desire spiritual gifts, before you prophesy, we must pursue love. We must pursue love. Love is a very, it's a word that is commonly used, but not many use that word with understanding. Not many use that word with the passion, with the meaning. Someone can say, I love you, and will still stab you in the back. Someone can say, I love you in your face, and they have evil thoughts about you. But he says that we should pursue love. Pursue love before anything else we should pursue love because God has already manifested his love to us on the cross. And so we've got to show that love. Amen. We're going to read chapter 13 of the first Corinthians chapter 13. And it says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. Though I speak with the tongues of men. So even when you speak in tongues and you have no love, your prayers becomes noise to the Lord. It's like you're making noise. You know when someone is making noise, you don't want to hear what they're saying because it's just too much. You're just loud. You don't listen. You don't hear what the person is saying. It's just noise. And a sounding brass is, is, is a, I mean, it's a sound that really goes into your ear. That can irritate you. Or a clanging cymbal. So you're just, you, you just become noisy. And we know the saying, empty barrels make the most noise. So if you're empty, then you have no love. So if you have no love, then you become 
a noise to the Lord when you're praying. You become just a brass to the Lord. Amen. So speaking in tongues of men does not necessarily mean that you have a good heart. Because tongues is a gift that is given to you freely. It's something that is yours freely. You can go speak all the tongues in this world. Yes, without love, you have nothing. You can speak in tongues and without love, you have nothing. And whatever you say to God, you become a noise, a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal to the Lord because of your heart. The Lord looks at your heart. The Lord looks beyond how you appear. He looks at the heart. <coughs> Sorry. So when David says, that teach me to keep your words in my heart that I may not sin against you. He knows what he's saying. That I may not sin against you because of the love that I have for you. That I may not sin against you because I have kept your commandments and I have kept your word. That I may not sin against you because all I desire is to is to dwell in your place to keep your commandments that I may not sin against you. And in so doing, I can only do so by knowing your word. And by knowing your word, I must love you to know your words because it says that you must love me to keep my commandments. And if you love me, you keep my commandments. And so in that, we keep the love of Christ because when he abides in you, everything of Christ becomes you and so his love becomes your love and your love becomes his love and so on that cross the lord demonstrated all our love all the loves both all the all the love the eros storch agape philia he showed it all on the cross the lord showed it all on the cross that he loved us so much so that even before he went on the cross, yet when we were sinners, he went on that cross that we may be redeemed, that we may be saved, that we may live life and live it in abundance. And we bless the Lord. Amen. So back to chapter 13, verse 1. You become an empty barrel making noise. Speak in tongues, but with no love, you're a brass making noise. Prophesy and all, but with no love, we are nothing. You can be the greatest philanthropist in this world, but with no love, it's in vain. Love has no pride. Love has no boast. Say it with love and to the glory of the Lord. Amen. Jesus did not parade love or talk about him showing his love. Instead, he showed it. So he did not talk about it, but he showed his love. And he showed that on the cross. And he humbled himself. That is key. Humility. Humbleness. Love. But in all this, Jesus did not glorify himself. Let's go to the books of Hebrews chapter 5. From verse 1 to 9, there's something interesting here. For every high priest taken from among men is appointed for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin. He can have compassion on those who are ignorant and going astray, since he himself is also subject to weakness. 
because of this he required us for the people so also for himself to offer sacrifices for sins and no man takes this honor to himself but he who is called by god just as aaron was so also christ did not glorify himself to become high priest but it was he who said to him you are my son today i have begotten you as he also says in another place you are a high priest forever according to the order of melchizedek who in the days of his flesh when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear though he was a son yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered and having been perfected he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him amen which goes back to keeping his commandments but in verse 5 so also christ did not glorify himself to become high priest christ did not glorify himself we are talking about our savior our redeemer the man who has government upon his shoulders the Lord who conquered death, who has the keys, who can be here and in thousand places at the same time. The Lord that knows your past, your now, your future, your end. The Lord who says, let it be, and it is. The Lord who makes a way where there's no way. The one who can make a way out of a brick wall. The one who says, peace, be still. And the seas hear his voice. The one who speaks to a tree. And the tree obeys his voice right from the, right from the roots. The one who raised the dead and raised himself from the dead. Not once, not once did Christ glorify himself to become high priest but it was he who said to him he god who said to him christ jesus you are my son today i have begotten you because he gave christ to us freely he has begotten he was begotten for us this is christ jesus who healed the sick the blind the lame the lady with the issue of blood, just by touching the hem of the Lord's garment, she received her healing. Not once did he glorify himself. And so how much more us, we have to forever be humbled like a dove. We have to be humbled. We shouldn't glorify ourselves, but we should give all the glory to the Lord. And in all things that we do, we should always remember it is not by might, it is not by power, but it's by the Spirit of the Lord Christ Jesus. And the Lord continues to show more of, more of, more of his love in the book of first john chapter 2 from verse 1 to 5 he demonstrates his love for us first john chapter 2 from verse 1 to 5 my little children these things are right to you so that you may not sin 
And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he himself is the propi the propitiation of the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the whole world. So Christ did not come to die just for us who call ourselves Christ likes or Christian, but for <coughs> everyone. Everyone. We have to bear that in mind. Everyone. Now by this we know that we know by this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. It's vital that we keep his commandments. It shows our relationship with him. He who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. Because Jesus is the spirit of truth. And so if you say, I know him, and you do not keep his commandments, the Lord is saying that we are a liar. Jesus, have mercy. But whoever keeps his word, Truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. Also in chapter 3, verse 1. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us because it did not know him. In what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that he, that we should be called his children of God because of the love he has for us. We are called the children of the Lord. Amen. And in verse 14 of the same chapter 3, 1 John chapter 3, verse 14, the Bible says that we know what we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. He who does not love his brother abides in death. And in verse 1 says, in what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called the children of God. But over here he says that we know that we have passed from death to life because we have love. Yes? For the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. You don't love your brother, you abide in death. You don't love him and you say you know him, you're a liar. If you say that you love someone and you're not showing it, that's a sin. If you speak in tongues and whatever that you do, you can give your house to the church. You can buy the church a car. You can, whatever you do. Whether in the house of the Lord or to your family or to your friends, if you do not have love and you're speaking in tongues and you're praying, you become clanging symbol to the Lord. A brass, your noise. And I pray that the Lord in his own mercy will forgive us for our sins and that we should never be noise to his ears. I don't want to be a clanging noise to the Lord. I don't want to be an empty barrel making noise to the Lord. If you don't have a heart of love, pray that the Lord will give you the heart of love. Whatever anger it is that is in you, that is causing you not to express love. Pray that the Lord 
<coughs> will give you that strength that the Lord will come in you and will take away anything that is bitter, anything that is that has anger, anything that is stopping you from moving forward. Because when we have so much hatred and we don't have the love, it also stops us from moving forward. Because you do not love him. And the Lord is saying that if we do these things, we do it in vain. And he calls us a liar and we become a noise to the Lord. Then imagine, that means the Lord is not listening to your prayers. And so you become a noise and you walk and you do things without pro, unprogressively. You, you don't move forward. And even if you're moving forward, what spirit is making you move forward? Is it the spirit of the Lord that is making you move forward? Because that can be easily amissed as well. That we see things going forward and we think that it is the Lord, even if it isn't. But Paul reminds us that we have to renew our minds. We always ought to search within ourselves to make sure we are on the right path with the Lord. And telling the truth in love pinches, but does not leave a scar. The fact that the Lord is saying, keep his commandments and love your neighbor as yourself, and we have to display all this love, does not mean also that you shouldn't, you shouldn't, you know, speak, speak uh, what, what's on your mind. If someone offends you, you still have to speak. It does not mean that you have to lay there as a doormat for everyone to walk on you. But you can also tell someone who has wronged you, but in love, and it does not leave a scar. Meaning you can say the same, you can tell them what you're doing is wrong, or I do not like what you're doing to me, or I'm not happy about this situation. And they ought to understand because of the love that is in you. Because if you don't say it out of love, it will leave a scar, and that becomes hatred, and that becomes a sin. And then it builds to be a grudge and we don't want that. You want your heart to be so free that the Lord can flow in and out of you. Amen. And so that's why we as his children are healed without scars. No matter the situation, because his love makes us perfect and we dwell in his word. And so in the scriptures that I read previously, because we dwell in his word, his love makes us perfect. And whatever the Lord does to us does not leave a scar. Because we dwell in his word and we know and we trust in his ways. But let's not miss that and get that also confused with the ways of the enemy. We've got to be spiritually alert and know to differentiate these things when they are happening. No things that is from the Lord. No things that is also from the enemy. No the things you have to fight against. And know the things. Because if Christ Jesus chastises you or he molds you, he remolds you, he's rebuilding you, whatever situation you're in, you will never be scarred because of the love that he has perfected in us. And he makes us understand why this is happening. And agape love forgives. We've got to forgive. Forgive one another. Because when we, when we pray in the, in the Lord's Prayer, we say, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So you cannot be asking for forgiveness if you have not forgiven your neighbor. With that being said, if you find it really difficult to forgive, you've got to pray about it for the Lord to do something and to change your heart. Some of the things that people are hurt over. I know it's beyond our own imaginations, but we've got to trust the Lord because people that hurt you in secret, people that hurt you in private, people that hurt you along the way in life, the Lord will make things right and will honor you because you've kept his commandments. You've got to remind him that because I've kept your commandments, I have to forgive. And so Lord, I am forgiven. The Lord will honor that. And who will do great and mighty things and show you great things in your life in the name of Jesus. Agape love also puts people in check, but with love. If you have agape love, you've got to, you've, you will be able to put people in their rightful places. 
but with love. Don't do it with so much haste. Don't do it with so much anger. Even if you're expressing these feelings, we need to try to not let our emotions always override certain things. But we are humans. But with agape love, it puts people in place, but with love. Amen. And agape love did not come cheap. Jesus Christ did not die on the cross Just like that, he suffered. He went through pain. Before getting the victory that he has or that we have today, is because of the agape love. It did not come cheap. And he says that if we follow him, we also must carry our cross. That means you also are going to face your own trials, your own tribulation. But we believe that in the end of it all is a great reward. But whilst you're going through your cross moment, you still have to lean and cling onto the cross in the name of Jesus. As I come to a close, we're just going to pray. Father Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the agape love, for your, for your agape love, for your eros love, for your storage love, for your filial love. And we thank you that you showed us all this on the cross. And we thank you, Father Lord, that you are in us and we are in you. And Father Lord, because we love you, we will keep your commandments. And Lord Jesus, Anyone that is watching, anyone that is listening, anyone that does not have a heart to keep your commandment, to keep your word. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray that, Lord God, you amend. Father, Lord, touch the hearts of those that are hurting, that have so much pain and anger that they don't know what to do with it. Lord, you make us understand that we should cast all our burdens upon you because you care for us. And so, Lord God, I say in the name of Jesus, anyone that is carrying all this excess luggage, all this baggage, all this burden, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you release it unto the Lord and the Lord will come into your heart and make things right. Open up your hearts for the spirit of the Lord to move freely. Jesus, touch our hearts, O Lord. Where we lack love, fill us with your love. Because you make us understand that for God so loved the world that you came. You gave us your only son to die for our sins, that we may have life and have it in abundance and eternal. You say, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal. And so with your gifts, O oh Lord, we also pray for love. Let your love be bestowed upon us. Immense us with your love. And teach us to live rightly, to live how you want us to live, to live Christ-like. Teach us to correct those that wrong us, but in love. Teach us how to move on from, from our pains, from our past hurts, from things that people have done us wrong. Teach us to move from that into your love, through your love. Give us a heart that is like yours. Teach us to forever walk in your love. May we not depart from your love, O oh Jesus. But Father, continue to fill us. And I pray that, Father Lord, you touch every heart, you touch every soul, you touch every mind. Be in control of those that are listening and those that are watching. And fill us with your love. Let it overflow. That we will walk in it and also show it to our neighbors. 
and that we will keep your commandments. And in so doing, we will keep your word in our hearts that we may not sin against you. And may we never be an empty barrel. And may we never be a noise into your ears. And may we never be a clanging cymbal sound in your ears. May we never be a brass sound in your ears. But Father Lord, may we speak and let it be a melody into your ears. Lord, we bless you that as we are coming up in this week, Jesus, fill us with your love. Walk with us with your love. Walk with us in your love. And let everything that we do be glorified and give you the praise, just as Christ did whilst he was on earth, because not once did he ever take the glory. And so, Jesus, we give you all the glory and all the honor for all the things that you are doing, O oh Lord. We bless your holy name. We speak love unto our life, into our lives, into our homes. Let the eros love, Jesus Christ, be in our family, in our marriages. Let the eros love, Lord, come and blossom. Let it fill our marriages. Let it change things. Where there is dryness, fill it with that eros love, O oh Lord. And may we fulfill the love that you have promised us. And let that same eros love, Jesus fill us and also father lord i pray in the name of jesus that let the love of philia be bestowed unto us let the love of philia be showed through us may we have the love of philia to our friends fill us with the love of philia in the name of jesus and also give us the love of the agape let us be filled with the unconditional love that is from you christ jesus let us also be filled with the love of empathy, of bond towards our family. And may all these love pertaining to us be filled and manifested fully in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we bless you and we exalt your holy name. And we say continue to order our steps, O Lord, in everything that we do. Our Father, we seek your love and we say let your love reign upon us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. We bless the Lord for today. And I pray that the love of Christ will forever abide in us. And not only abide in us, but also we will keep it in our hearts that we may not sin against him. And also demonstrate that same love that the Christ Lord Jesus is asking us to do. And I pray also that whatever situation that you're in, let love oversee certain things that you will not miss your own blessing because at times we let things of the world or people's behavior overtake what we have in us and we do not step into our blessings but i pray that the love of christ jesus will fill us that we will not miss our blessings because we've got to have a heart of christ jesus and in doing that we've got to have a heart that is full of love. Amen. And so, until next time, may Christ Jesus order your steps. May the love continue to be filled in you, in your homes, in your children, in whatever circumstance. Continue to fervently pray and continue to open your heart to the Lord. And the Lord will do great and mighty things that you're not expecting. We bless him for what he's doing, for who he is, and we give him all the glory. Father Lord, we thank you for this day. And until next time, as I come your way, stay blessed. And my name is Sister Gloria. And I leave you with peace and love from Christ Jesus. Amen. Bye, guys. Bye, all. Bye.